All right, chip of the day. This one's a strange one. Uh, this is a 74 LS 625. I have a 625. There's a series of them. But uh, yeah, I have the LS 625. It says it's similar to an LS 325, which I, I don't know anything about either. Um, but it is a very strange part. Um, didn't really know they existed. And it is, let me describe what it is. It's a voltage controlled oscillator. So that can be very valuable in doing like um, face lock loops and things like that. This one goes up to about 10 megahertz, something like that. Um, I don't know if there are HC versions. I didn't really look, take a look at what other families of uh, parts have duplicated the uh, 625, whether you can get HC or C or F or, I don't know. I don't know what other parts are available. But anyway, I've got this one, so let's play with it. It is a interesting part. It has a strange uh, VCC. Um, so on this particular package, VCC is on pin 16, but ground's on pin one, actually. This is a different ground. There is a there is 16 in ground, but this is a different ground. So there are three VCCs and three grounds all in the same part. So it's kind of odd. This is the master ground here, pin one. And then there are another VCC and grounds down here that are just for the oscillator sections. Okay, so you can have a separate voltage uh, for the oscillator, and I suspect that's probably to make sure it's stable. So you can have maybe a cleaner VCC and ground over here, and then have the dirty system ground over here. I'm not, I'm not quite sure about that, but that's my guess. Um, there really isn't a lot of data on this part. It's kind of a kind of a strange part. They really don't say much about it. Uh, so I guess if you had to use this part, maybe you contacted them directly and asked them, you know, TI directly and asked a bunch of questions or something. But yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a, a bit of a strange part. The uh, data sheet is very sparse, but there is two, this is, this is the part we'll be using. There's two sections. So it's two oscillators in one package. And uh, there's oscillator one, oscillator two, they're completely separate. Um, and uh, they have uh, complementary outputs. They have, uh, you know, Q and not Q and Q and not Q for the two oscillators. They call them Y and Z. I don't know why, but they call them Y and Z. And then um, on the inputs, uh, we'll talk about the, how these things work on the inputs but they are completely separate. And the nice thing about the layout is on the left-hand side of the chip is one oscillator and on the right-hand side of the chip, as far as pinout, uh, are, are the different things. So you can, let me just show that again here. If you look at the, uh, if you look at the pinout, yeah, these are all the one oscillators and these are all the two oscillators. So it's, it's split, so it makes uh, layout and separation of clocks and stuff. Because th these are going to be noisy devices in a system, so they keep them separate on the two halves. That's nice. All right, <clears throat> let's see what else we can find out about this thing. The uh, sheet over here is not really much of much use because it just kind of talks about regular TTL, you know, uh, 74LS type stuff over here. So it doesn't really do you do you a lot of goods. There's a little bit down here on the oscillator VCC, um, how much current it draws. It is a little bit power hungry, 35 milliamps. Um, and then the really good stuff happens in the graphs, really. Um, let's see. So let's see, before we talk about the graph, let's take a look at the part first. All right, so the part looks like this. Um, I have one of the oscillators here shown here. So 16, pin 16 and one is common to both oscillators. Pin seven and eight is common only to the oscillator number one. So this is oscillator number one, and I'm just gonna hook it up to five volts and ground. Um, then on the inputs, there's just a capacitor. So you get to choose one capacitor and then there's one control voltage. So this voltage controls the oscillator frequency. So that's all you have to supply on this chip is one capacitor and then you just supply a voltage and you get to vary, vary the, uh, 
vary the frequency and then the output is just complementary. So that's all there is to it. Very, very simple part, but not a lot of data on it. <clears throat> so let's take a look at the graph here. So this is the control voltage, okay? They have a 50 picofarad capacitor uh, and then this is the control voltage. So at one volt, you're getting about two and a half megahertz. And at five volts, you're getting about nine and a half megahertz. So that is the range. And it's, it's not exactly linear, but pretty close. Uh, let's see, here's another graph. Uh, this one's at 15 picofarads. It says it can go up to, oh, it can go up to 20 megahertz. So from about four megahertz to 24 megahertz. Well, that's pretty cool. Zoom, zoom, zoom. And uh, then that's about it. I mean, that's about all you get. And don't be tricked into thinking that the block diagram is the one you've got. So there's this weird block diagram here. It doesn't match our part. This is for some other part. So just ignore that on the, on the data sheet if you get one of these parts. So let's, uh, let's hook one up and see what it does. All right, uh, in my testing, I'm going to be using a 120 picofarad capacitor and um, we get a square wave out. And then if I reach up behind here, okay, uh, that is going to be the voltage that we're operating at. Okay, so if I move it down, you can see we get a lower frequency. And if I move it up, we get a higher frequency. Um, Let's see here. Let's go ahead and turn the counter on so we know what we're at here. All right, so we're at three megahertz at 3.7. And we go up to five volts and we're at uh, four megahertz. So my little thing goes between four megahertz and 400 kilohertz, something like that. So anyway, you can see it does act as a VCO very nicely. And if you want to look at the uh, complementary uh, clock, there you go. It's, uh, let's close the counter here. Oh, there we go. It's just complimentary, so. Uh, yeah, that's all there is to it. So I think this could be a real useful part. They're, um, I don't think they're cheap, because maybe they didn't make a lot of them, or they're a difficult part to make or whatever. I don't know. They're not, uh, not the most cheapest uh, LS part I've seen, but uh, it might be nice. It's a little bit easier to use than a 555 for sure. Um, and very, uh, if you need something that you can actually vary with a voltage, so you could output a voltage from a, um, from a microcontroller and uh, control this thing. Well, that's kind of fun. Um, so anyway, I don't know. If you've ever seen one before, you ever see a circuit that used one, it's pretty cool. So today's chip of the day is a 74LS625.